Hey everyone, Lawrence Mack here, real estate broker out of Mississauga and Toronto and founder of Real Estate Rookies. And I'm here with Ben Osterveld. Ben, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good, my friend. That is awesome. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Ben was a superstar in his rookie first and second year, made like a million dollars of commission, started a team, sold the team, did some coaching. I don't know what else there is to say about you. Big family man, tons of kids. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Lots. Five kids. I five just became, kids. just became a best-selling author. So that's a little new for me, which is exciting. That's awesome. So that's that, uh, this yeah, book yeah. here, Richest Real Estate Agent. So everyone go get that from Amazon. I don't have an affiliate link. Just go search on it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what I'm going to make. Like $2. It doesn't yeah. Matter. Yeah. I don't even know what I make on that thing. <laughs> it yeah, takes who knows, so. right? No, it's yeah, exactly. It's the only mindset, real estate mindset systems book ever. Like most people are getting, getting a lot of training on real estate, but most of the people uh, get stuck in the mindset and uh, and they sacrifice a lot to become successful. So that's why the book's written. It's literally a map, step-by-step, -step, how to build a business, but it's really about mindset and how to get out of your own way. So a little different than other books. Yeah, it's a whole holistic type of approach to it. And that just like, go, 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 and just get, you know, get commissions and that kind of stuff. As a quick note, Ben is having a workshop in Toronto. He's not from Toronto, you are from uh, West Coast. West Coast, yep. West Vancouver. Coast, and he's coming over to Toronto. That would be uh, May 31st, as I recall. I think I've already signed up for that. That would be on the Tuesday, somewhere in, I forget where it is. <laughs> it's yeah, my... yeah, it's a, it's at the Old, uh, old, the mill. old mill Hotel. Right. It's a gorgeous hotel. It's beautiful. Yeah, but yeah. I don't mill. know. That's It's all Toronto to me, to be honest. When I look at a map, <laughs> I'm like, it's all Toronto. <laughs> do you have still space in your workshop if people want to go? Yep. Yeah, we okay. do. So just yeah. connect up uh, on his website or with Ben, but... Uh, Anyway, that, that should be a really fun event. Be a lot of cool people to mastermind, that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, so sure. I guess, Ben, did you want to start a presentation there? Sure. And I Let's guess go. just go at it. So in general, Ben's just going to talk for a bit. I'm just going to shut up. And then at the end, ask any questions you like with Ben or myself or any other issues you have. And I'm sure he's happy to answer. Yeah, Take for away, sure. Ben. Awesome. <clears throat> Thanks, Lawrence. Um, I was thinking of today and, and uh, super excited when someone asked me to talk about mindset. And because I think when the, the, the number one issue is that most agents know what to do, but they just get in their own way. And there's also a big issue with the industry. The industry is teaching you how to find clients. Very few brokerages or trainers out there teaching you how to keep them for 20 years. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just take a look at what a business owner is and uh, what mindset that business owner needs to have and also what an employee mindset is. And then I'm going to give you a framework to build on. And then I'm going to actually uh, show you five things that you can do that you'll need to do to actually start putting your business together versus just being the forever to-do list and, uh, you know, reaching your sales capacity and then not being able to sell. But I'll work through this right now. Let's let's rock and roll. So if we take a look first at the employee mindset, this is a really interesting one for me. I be, I'm a business coach. I was a business coach before I was even an agent. Um, when I became an agent, I hired an assistant literally within the first couple of weeks, uh, ended up doing about 90, 90 sales in my first year. <clears throat> how do we do that? It's a, it's a thinking game, not a how-to game. So just think of it this way. Imagine having uh, someone come up to you, one of your buddies, and they say, hey, I just bought a restaurant. And you're like, oh, that's awesome. He goes, yeah, here's my plan. So I bought a restaurant uh, it's, it, and it's got lots of potential. I'm going um, to cook because I love cooking. I love cooking. That's why I bought the restaurant. But I'm going to do the cooking. I'm going to do the hosting. I'm going to do the parking lot cleanup. I'm going to do the marketing. I'm going to do the accounting. I'm going to clean the dishes. I'm going to do the food prep. I'm going to do it all. And uh, it's going to save me a lot of money. And it's going to be done the way it should be done. If we had someone come say that to you, what would, it, what would your response be? I know my response would be like, you're an idiot. And you're destined to fail. Then why do we take the same approach as real estate agents? You have listings with a whole whack of systems. You've got buyers with a whole whack of systems. You've got paperwork. You've got education. You've got, you've got bookkeeping, taxes, marketing, aftercare, human resources, hiring an assistant. 
the thing is, we think we can do it all ourselves. It's mind blowing. Imagine doing it all yourself. What happens to the service? What happens is that what you do is, you know, the extra mile simply doesn't happen anymore. This, the business becomes a transaction business, not a business to build a client base that refers you. You simply don't have the time. You know, as, a, as an employee mindset, what you're looking at is how much time do I have in the day to get it done? That's when people start giving me that kind of bullshit excuse that they're procrastinators. They're not procrastinators. They just have five jobs they're doing. So lighten up. You're not sitting there going, man, I just need to need to time block better. That's an employee mindset. I need to be get up early, 5 a.m. club, employee mindset. I got to get this stuff done up till two in the morning doing paperwork. Really? Imagine, imagine the guy that started Walmart. You know, oh, I got to hit the till in the morning. It doesn't even make sense. The next thing that happens is burnout. Burnout is the single most lost revenue in real estate today because what happens is you don't get excited about those leads anymore someone calls you and says hey i want to list a house that's not exciting anymore that's when you know you got burnout coming burnout can get you a chip on the shoulder that lasts your whole career burnout can can get you to the place where what that means is you've got so much on your plate and you're trying to grow still that's when burnout happens. It costs you your relationships at home. You start missing time with your friends. You work late into the evening, you know, doing, doing the working, you know, in your business, not on your business. You're submitting the paperwork yourself. You're booking showings by yourself. You're doing all your email communications for the deal flow. You're prepping CMAs and like, but what about building the business? So this leads me to this. Do it all yourself, hey? Like that insane guy that buys a restaurant and tries to do it all themselves. Like if you think about a billion dollar company or someone that hits $100 million or $10 million, they don't think about sales till the end. They first think about the market. They understand to get clear on what their mission is. Second thing they do is hire a team raise funds, and they lose money for the first year. They know their priorities. They know that they can't get to scale and get what they want. They can't make that kind of money doing it all themselves. That's white belt. So what's interesting is this is a really interesting concept. I've got a background in studying psychology for 20 years in human behavior. By the way, if you want to level up, that's the answer. It's not how, it's not sales training, it's not lead gen training, it's, it's not even building a team or anything, it's psychology. I'll give you an example. When you're busy, when you're doing it all yourself and you think you can do it all yourself, you're gonna self-sabotage. Again, this is gonna cost you a fortune in your career if you don't get this done right. When, you're, when, when, when a deal comes in and you're already busy, as an employee, you're going to say, I'm at capacity. I cannot do more sales. That's a tragedy. Are you kidding me? You can't grow. You got, you, the dream was that you'd have endless clients coming in to see you, but you literally know that if you take another client, that client doesn't mean more freedom. What it means is more busy, harder on the wife and kids. It means later nights. It means more pressure. If you're getting to the place where you have sales, but don't have time, you will push away sales. You will tell them subconsciously, I don't jump on those quick callbacks. I don't do my follow-ups. I can't because it creates more pressure. This is the real big problem because as, a, as, a, as an employee, you have 24 hours in the day. And if you want a date night, you know, if you want to go to see a movie, you want an evening to watch the, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs lose, then you'd actually have to be a business owner. The other thing that so subconsciously you push away sales as an employee once you hit capacity. Now, 
What's interesting is actually, let me go back here. Here's the thing. How about holidays? Did you know that when I do a, when I coach, I, I, I do a set your compass session and I ask people what their happiest days are. So we can really get to know what's motivating people and how to build the life they love using real estate. And most people want to travel. So I run a, I run a mastermind, uh, you know, an invite only mastermind. And one of the rules is always be traveling because that's one of the most important things on the planet. My father-in-law, he passed away a couple of years ago. Um, and I was sitting talking to him and I'm a pretty straight shooter. I said, okay, you're going to die. What are you thinking about? He goes, I'm thinking about the three holidays. I keep thinking about the three holidays you took me and, and, and his wife on my mother-in-law. I took him to Florida. We just, we just paid their way to join us on the family holiday because they had never traveled. It was always camping. They had five kids. They were self-employed. They, they never made it massively successful. They did, had a great life with family, but we paid for them to go to San Diego, Vegas, and Florida over the years. And on his deathbed, that's what he was thinking about. Like, we got to listen to that. Are you traveling? Are you able to even have a holiday? And when you're on holidays, are you just doing deals? Are you just worried that your business is going to fall apart? When you go away, do your, does your business have a big, giant, closed sign? That's not, a, that's not how you do real estate. That's not how you build a business. That's just a job. When you're not working, you're not making money. And when you're full, you push away the sales, and that's going to cost massive amount of money. There's a guy that I uh, that just signed up to our, we have a one-year mentorship program. It's called the Real Estate Reboot. This guy just signed up last week. He, uh, when I was talking to him, he said, I did 65 deals last year by May. Just let that sink in. He has no assistant, no nothing. He did it all on his own. He said that, he said that it, it was so hard on him. He didn't talk about the money and the freedom and the holidays and the, and the, and the motorbike he bought. He didn't talk about anything because that never happened. He just made lots and lots of money, but he, it took his freedom because he took it, he, he treated it like, a, like an employee. But by the way, celebrated by, everyone would celebrate that guy. Holy crap, 65 sales by May, you're amazing. And he's like, I don't feel amazing. So he joined the program because he needs to become a business owner. Because what happened was the following year, this year, he's nowhere near those sales. Why? He goes, I'm not having that happen again. I'm not getting that busy again. There's no way. Like that is an employee mindset. What about saying this year, I'm going to reinvest 20% of the money I make into building infrastructure systems, having an executive assistant, a marketing assistant, and a buyer's agent. Then what happens is you could do 150, 200 sales and you literally don't have time used up. You have your, you still have time. That is a business owner mentality. The salesman, uh, salesman or employee mentality, the hustler just simply says, I can't take the business, but I want to grow. This is a problem. So now let's talk about if you wanted to put in systems. How many people? How many people bought a CMA? Sorry, bought, bought yeah, bought a bought a CMA system, a client a client software, and they didn't use it. They started using it, but they didn't keep going on it. You have to understand the list that you build is the number one asset you have in your whole company. If you're not touching base with your clients, every past clients. In some way, every single month, you're leaving more money on the table than anything. It's unbelievable. Just think about that if you could put a follow after the care follow up system in. Imagine if you had someone that could do feedback and communication during the listing during the listing uh, process with your clients. What about someone that can can do odds and ends? What if someone could pick up your laundry? What about all these other things that you're doing that you should not be doing? You'll never, ever implement systems. The employee mentality always chases the sale, never stops to build the business, hence why they're always on the treadmill. I'm always looking for sales, looking for sales. If you have a choice to put in your aftercare system and it takes you 24 to 48 hours of work, Let's just even say it takes four hours of work to build your after the sale automated system, but a CMA request comes in, 99% of employee mentality say, screw that system, I'm chasing the sale. That's the mistake. That's why it's hard to become a business owner because there's a delayed gratification and most people are chasing that rush, that transaction. So let's talk about lost revenue for a minute, okay? Let's talk about the price that employees' mentality pays. You ever want to get to seven figures, you'll never do it as an employee. Let's just imagine this. Let's say that you had 
let's just say that subconsciously you're pushing deals away. Subconsciously, you don't chase the deal, whether it would be an overthinker, whether it would be a, uh, you know, a perfectionist. There's other issues that come into play from the subconscious that plays out on why you're not growing your sales. When your self-worth is low, your net worth always follows. When your self-worth is high, so is your net worth. It is fact. I've got lots of, lots of proven studies to prove the guys that feel valuable usually make more money. The other part of it is if you don't have a follow-up system, just imagine. Imagine if you had a follow-up system, not just for prospects, but for after the sale clients. This is the most exciting thing when I'm helping an agent build a company, build a business, is putting in their after the sale systems. The reason why is because it's the most, it's the competitive edge because no one has them. No one really has them. Do they have a birthday? Do they have do they have birthday systems, monthly touches? There's all these other things that we put together because what happens is when the market changes, your business never, ever goes down. It might dip a little bit, but usually employee mentality have big highs and big lows. You know how many guys I've coached that made 400 grand and then 100 grand? That's a business that because, it, sorry, the reason why that happens is because life gets in the way and there's no systems to bridge the gap. Just imagine having a follow-up system that would, that would nurture your clients after the sale. How many of us blow their clients' minds? They love us. The service is amazing because that's where you spend your time. But then as soon as that deal is done, you might make a follow-up call. Hey, you're in your house. Is there anything I can do? Maybe if you're not busy enough, but there's after that, it's crickets. How many sales have you done that the client that you acquired had bought or sold before you? Think about it. 90% of the people you'll sell or buy a house with had an agent before you. This is great news because as an employee, no one has the time to actually implement systems. If anyone wants to put in an after the sale system that keeps nurturing the clients, could you get one deal a month more? Let's do the math. By the way, the answer is a thousand percent yes. One more deal a month is not a big deal. It is a real thing. It's not hard to get if you have your systems in. Now, here's the thing. If you can stop if you can just understand the cost, you might stop chasing the sale and start building your systems, which is very counterintuitive because money is right on the other side of that sale, but there's 10X the money on the other side of the system. One sale a month times by 12 months at a $10,000 average sale is $120,000 more on your income then as a business owner, you don't think in 12 month terms, you think in five, 10 and 20 year terms, let's go 10 years at $120,000 more revenue is $1.2 million of more revenue on top of what you do. Imagine having that in retirement. Imagine having $1.2 million sitting as extra income. You take one deal and you set it aside into a, into a savings account or into investments. That one extra deal, because you had a system for follow-up, is $1.2 million. But instead, we crash that and we say, we don't need that. I'm going to go after the $10,000 sale, not the $1.2 million over 10 years. That's mindset. So let's talk about what it is to be a business owner, okay? Business owner mindset is a whole different game. It's a whole new set of skills. Real estate agents are just salespeople. That's all they're trained on. Do your door knocking, get your flyers out. Make sure, you know, doing networking, you know, doing farming, doing lead gen calls. This is the conversation because everyone is being a salesperson. Huge advantage if you shift your mindset into building a company. First of all, you get to take time off and make money. You don't have a company unless you've actually gone away, come back and made money. If you go away and your business doesn't run, you didn't make any money, that you didn't have a business, you have a job, you have a promotion, you don't have a company. I remember building Team Osterveld and uh, before I sold it, I had two years where I didn't make a sale, maybe one or two, just some easy ones that I did, but really didn't make a sale. And I was making hundreds of thousands of dollars net profit. 
because I had team, I had an office, I had systems, I had aftercare, and I had a massively good reputation because I've connected with every one of my clients and we stayed in touch. Very simple. But I did the work that it took to invest that. So what's very possible to build a company and have the business working for you. I know a guy right now, his name's Koken. He's out of Toronto. You might've seen him. He's become pretty, pretty YouTube famous. And he uh, does real estate investments and uh, he has a whole team. He teaches investments. He has a, and he's, he went from buyer's agent to million dollar agent in like literally last year was his team. His team numbers were over a million within three and a half years of, because he went from buyer's agent and he put in his business owner skills. He worked on his business owner skills. He put in the right systems. He went through the brutal hiring process. He, he put in his team structure, all of those things happened. And, and now he's in Japan. I think he landed today. He's literally in Japan and he's spending one month away at his wife's family's place in Japan while he's making money. That's a business. The other thing is he's now, oh, I'll get into the story about Koken in a second. I'm going to get into that in a second. I'm almost ADD. So anyways, you want to make money while you're away. That's a really, really big thing. So the other thing is, is that when you become a business owner, the tasks that drain you do not have to be done. You change your mindset from being a procrastinator to who can do it for me and how much does it cost and how much is my return on investment? That's a mindset that you need to have as a business owner, not a salesman going, how many more deals do I have to pay for whatever? That's an employee mindset. So what it is, is when you're away, do you make money? It's a really important question because when you're away or when you're taking time off, you're going out to hockey games, you're going out for coffees with friends, you're going on a ski trip. What happens is present mental presence, you're there for them. You feel connected to your kids again. You feel connected in the evening with your wife, knowing that those showings are being booked while you're watching you know, your shows, you're watching Survivor with your kids and your family, and those showings are being booked. You're not sitting there with an energy leak thinking, okay, I'll do Survivor, I'll watch the show, get the kids to bed, and then I'll send all the emails uh, and get all the showings booked. This is gone. The energy leak is gone. It's a major, major thing for business owners. The next thing is, this is amazing. I love this idea is that you can increase your capacity to grow. You don't resist growth anymore. You actually have systems that do the work for you that open up time and freedom and you let your systems uh, and your admin carry the workload. You don't got to do it all anymore. You actually don't, you stop judging yourself as a procrastinator and realize you're very, very motivated, very efficient. You just have too much on your plate and you needed help. You'll never resist growth again. You'll have the time and energy to put toward landing clients, doing those calls. Like, wouldn't that be amazing? I think every single person has the intention. Every agent has the intention of calling their past clients. Imagine if you could actually do it on a consistent basis because other stuff that drains you are off your plate. And when you call a client, you feel amazing because they're like, oh, hey, how you doing? That's the fun part of the business. The other part is that the other part of increasing your capacity is that you don't lose clients anymore. You don't have slipping through lack of follow-up, lack of aftercare. What happens is new leads come in and the referrals come in. That's how you double and triple or quadruple your business without more effort because you have those systems in place to capture those sales and you have the capacity energy-wise and team-wise and admin-wise to actually continue to grow. And you actually know the path to grow as well, because if you hit your capacity with your team, you can add another team member, you can add another assistant, or you literally have enough and you live your amazing life. It's up to you. The never lose clients is massive, just absolutely massive. Guys, I just want you to really think about something. I really want you to just understand that the goal is not to hit an award every year and then have a bigger award every year. That serves the brokers, okay? The brokers need really big agents so they can recruit other agents. And it's all GCI anyway. So it's a weird business because if you think about it, let's say a guy makes, you know, I think I wrote it in the book, a guy makes 800 grand, he gets on stage and he gets this massive award, but no one asks him what it cost him to get that 800 grand. What if it cost him $600,000 in lead gen and, and business costs and everything. And he, so really he's net 200 grand, but he's getting an award in front of everyone else. And you're comparing yourself to that guy that made 800 grand. And you're like, wow, what did he do? Well, he made 200 grand. Why are the people in the room not being celebrated at 200 grand? They, because they don't, because the big number is actually a really, really motivating thing for brokers. 
Let's imagine another guy in the same room at $800,000, but he only cost 200 grand to get his 800, means that he made 600,000. He's sitting, he's sitting in the, he's sitting in the room. Oh, sorry. Let me back that up. Guy makes 800 grand, cost him 600. He walks with 200,000. We got another guy that made 300,000, but it only cost him 50 grand. He actually has 250,000 of net profit, but he, on paper, he looks on in, in the awards, he only gets celebrated as a $300,000 agent. Do you see the problem? The $800,000 agent gets fully elevated, but he made less money. Not even part of the concern. That shows to me that everyone is building salesmen. They don't give a crap about profit because they don't celebrate profit. They celebrate gross revenue. And that causes every agent in the world to compare themselves thinking that guy's winning, but no one knows their numbers. So I want to shift your thinking from awards and, and yearly awards and, and comparing yourself to these agents that you have no clue what their net profit is. If you make a million dollars and spend a million dollars, you're a loser in business, but you're celebrated in real estate. We got a problem. That's not helping new agents. That's not helping people that compare themselves. It's just building insecurity. So what you want to do is think of this. Imagine 500 transactions in your lifetime, whether you get there in 10 years or you get there in 20 years. If you can keep 500 clients and create a 10% referral rate, what do you get every year? 50 transactions a year in your retirement, which you can outsource at 50%. And you could live retired by having an amazing client base, no marketing budget, but no one's building that because we're thinking short-term and we need to think long-term. You just got to stop losing clients and focus on keeping them. So I'm going to take a second here. I'll get to Q&A in a second. But what I want to show you is how to become a business owner. This is a whole nother world. So first of all, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to just jump, jump off here. I'm going to jump here for a second. I'm going to share my screen. Let's go here. Oh, that's not it. Stop sharing. I think this is here. Give me one second. There. Okay. Lawrence, can you see my whiteboard? Just give me a, yep, give me I a can head. see it. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to show you, I want to show you a model that we need to follow if you want to become a business owner. This is very simple. Okay. So we go like this. Let's see if I can just forgive me. Actually, you know what? I'm going to just uh, go a little bigger than that. So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> so first of all, this is the steps to becoming a business owner and having a real scaled business. So if everyone doesn't understand scale, that means you're making money in less time and less effort. You have automations that work with you or without you. So first of all, set your compass. So when you're setting your compass, this is one of the major things we do when we work with agents that literally you're not allowed to work with us unless we do this, is we need to figure out if your financial goals match the life that you're trying to build. Most of the time, when we align your personal goals and your financial goals, your financial goals are way higher than what you need. What if you wanted to travel, have holidays, go camping, uh, write a book, like, what are your ambitions? I want to learn how to play guitar. What is your fuel and what do you want out of your life? Let's say it costs 40 deals. No, let's go back and say it costs 20 deals. But your goal is 40. The problem is this. If you don't get connected to the building a life that you love, paid for by your real estate business, the cost of those extra 20 deals may take your marriage, may take your health, may take your mindset, anxiety, depression, anger. It's going to not be a good place to live. You get 40 deals and you get a lot of stress, 20 deals. You could have the life that you want. We need to figure out how to set your goals around the life that you want, not some stupid deal number or financial goal. The financial goal has to be set to pay for something. Do you know how many people I sit down with? I'm like, hey, what do you want? I want to do 50 deals a year. Awesome. Tell me what you're going to spend the money on. And they just go with this dumb look on their face. Like, I don't know. I just want to have lots of money. What they're trying to accomplish, and I don't have time to go through it today, is emotional fixes. 
Because when I just ask them, when I'm working with them, set your compass, I say, describe the life you have once you hit your goal. And they say, I worry less. I don't have stress. I wake up and have a coffee. I, I can go for a walk with my wife in the morning. I can go to the gym. I'm like, you literally described a life that cost you 150 grand a year. Then why do you need 500,000? So alignment is number one. If you want to become a business owner, realize the business is only there to serve what you want to get. If you are stuck serving your business, you're a slave and it's going to cost you a fortune. In my book, and the richest real estate agent I talk about the very first intro says I came home one day. This is when I was like rocking guys. I was pretty egotistical compared to what I am now. I was, you know, killing it as a coach, building a national coaching company. I was rock star real estate agent, building a team, paying for all kinds, have a beautiful house and lots of money coming in, nice cars, holidays. And I came home and I sat down on, on my, on the bench and my wife says, I need to talk. And she goes, I'm, I want to leave you. I'm ready to leave you. And I said, what the heck? I said, I know what I, she goes, she goes, I, I'm tired of chasing you around. I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, I do everything for you. I do everything for you. I, I go and I, I work hard every day and I, I pay for everything, our holidays, the house and, and the, the opportunities we giving our kids. And she goes, I don't want, I didn't want any of that. I just wanted you. And it was a massive wake up call. And I realized my psychology says this, Ben, you are not enough. And when I believe I'm not enough, I go way overboard with my performance as a performance mentality because I'm not enough almost cost me my marriage. I realized I didn't have to do all these extra things. I could just, so that was when I said, build a life you love. And I realized that day I had already won the game, had more money than I needed. I had family. I was loved by my kids. We had a whole, I had enough. But it's not cool in this world to talk about your enough. It's always about do more, be a master. It's screwed up. So setting your compass is the number one thing we need to do first. The next thing is we need to do a business. Forgive my, my spelling. I'm dyslexic and all kinds of problems. So task, audit. You need to do a business task audit. Write down every single thing that you do in the business, every single thing and say, does it strengthen me or does it weaken me? And you will have a very clear picture of what needs to be outsourced and the job description and the things that you need to get rid of. And you grade how you make decisions on does it energize me or does it weaken me? Does it drain my energy? Once you figure that out, you hire. You hire. You hire all the things that drain your energy because even if you think about doing, let's just say, uh, uh, let's say deal by deal client communications, writing an email for me is slow. So if I had someone else write the email, it's fast. There's things that I should not be doing in this business that I need to outsource so I can do what I'm amazing at, which is sales, marketing, human communication, connecting with my clients, serving them. Everything else is taken care of to this day. And that's where I scale. That's how I made a million bucks in my first two years. Because I, I was literally so bad that I had to get help. I had an advantage. The next one is systems. But the thing is, most people start with sales. You see sales on here? Nope. Watch this. This person puts in the systems. That's how you do it. You hire and you, you get your systems. I got a book here, my, my course book. Where is it here? Uh, where is it? I don't know where. Here it is. This is, the, this is the manual to my course. It's 250 pages of all the systems and every single step-by-step -step guide you need for marketing systems, operations, after the sale care. Literally say, here, can you help me put these systems in? That's how you scale. You don't start chipping away at the 250 pages of systems. You get someone else to do it. So that's the framework, very simple framework on becoming a business owner. So set your compass, get clear on what you want. I'm going to tell you a story. Carson out of Edmonton, well over a million dollar agent. Uh, he came to me. He says, Hey Ben, I need to, I need to, um, uh, get another assistant. I heard you're really good at helping people with that. I said, yeah. So we got together. 
I looked at his business. He had two assistants. He was well over a million. He had a team. He was crushing. And his, and his solution was to get another assistant because he knew he was too busy. So I sat down with him and I said, you got a major problem. The problem is that you're actually going to create more capacity, but you don't know why you need it. I said, you're just going to get more money and more busy. And I said, you need to spend some time on thinking of what you actually want. I interviewed him on the podcast on my, the richest real estate agent podcast. His name's Carson Breyer. So I can, I can share his story. When he came to me, he was actually separated with his wife living in a different place. I didn't know that, but he thought hiring another assistant, creating more capacity would help him. So I told him, I said, if you don't get clear on what you want, you're just going to fill your schedule up again and get more sales. You've already got that figured out. Six months later, he's bought a boat. He's taking holidays. He doesn't do condos anymore. Every decision was based on what he wanted was he wanted a family. He wanted to have fun. He wanted to enjoy himself. He came on one of my retreats and his wife and him fully reconciled. They live together now. They actually have an amazing relationship now because he got his compass set. He was about to make more money and his marriage was almost going to break. So knowing what you want is important. Schedule your life first. This is, this is one lesson I want to make sure you guys understand. We're almost done here. We go Q&A. Um, one of the things is this. Uh, Koken, I'm going to get back to Koken here. He's in Japan right now. Uh, in the last month, he's got his business so dialed in, but there's this weird sense we have as kids that we get, we get celebrated for working hard. I know I struggle with that because I can work harder than anybody and I'm proud of it. And it's a weird thing because it actually goes against business owner. Like there's times where I can grind and I'm really happy that I can put a hundred hours straight in, but I know that it'll kill me eventually. So I can do a little burst of it. That's it. The problem is you always think, oh, I'll get to that place when I have money. I'll get to that place when I hit the sales. It's not true. It never, ever happens. So what Koken did was, here's a cool lesson, guys. He says, I'm taking Fridays off, never working another Friday. I'm having long weekends forever. Anxiety showed up, huge anxiety. He ignored it and he did it. What happens Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, he's the most efficient worker you've ever seen in your life. He gets more done in his week having Friday off than he ever did with having five days to do the work. You have to understand if you're not scheduling your, your, your time off, you're not scheduling your holidays, you're not scheduling your time away, your date nights, you got to schedule your life and then the business is, gets built around that. You don't fit your life into what's left because there is nothing left at the end of the real estate day. That's Coke in there. Business task audit, talked about that. Guys, if you don't understand that, first of all, the biggest thing is, is salespeople are not business owners. Real estate agents usually aren't business owners and you have to skill up in business owner skills. One is becoming a master at hiring. The other one is communication. Understand how to lead people, leadership, your energy, understanding how to build culture. There is a whole set of skills that you need as a business owner one is mastering hiring. You will never scale without having people. The last thing is systems. you got to automate. You're, it's insane. You don't have to have a thousand staff when you have amazing automations. As long as the automations don't take away from client experience, remember your brand is the conversation behind your back, not some stupid logo or some billboard. That's not your brand. It's what people say behind your back. So you've got to automate. You're with your systems and never, ever sacrifice ever sacrifice automation, sorry, client, world-class client experience for automation and systems. So that's automated emails. That's deal flow emails. That's, that's your monthly gift that shows up for their birthdays. There's things that can be built into a business that literally take 3% as your time. 97% is the system. This is the huge part of it. This is how you build businesses. It's just not talked about in real estate. Here's the scale business. And that's the end of that. So Lawrence, I want to just say thanks. I hope that's given some value. Uh, I, I, I thanks for oh, wow, that share, was man. that was like chock full of tips and that was like a solid forty five minutes of just like bam bam bam. I'm sure the workshop's going to be amazing. Uh, there are some questions in the chat. Um, Let's go. So let me. Uh, first question was really in the book. Was that pyramid in the book? I don't recall seeing nope. no any graphics in the book. I think it was just words, as I recall. 
No, that's, that's in the course stuff I do. It's, there's a lot of, of, for, of frameworks that we do, lots mm-hmm. of framework in, the, in, our, in our coaching business. And to be honest with you, um, yeah, I, the, I could give it. It's on this. It's like, it's not going to do anything. You'll no, have no, it. I know. It's, no, I'm just, <laughs> just wondering, I guess, if you went more in detail on the book. I just don't. Uh, yeah, no, it's not. The, the book The book will, will be the concepts. Yeah. You've, you've read the book. Yeah, no, I've read it. Yeah, I, not I don't, the, I don't have seeing, the actual pyramid, no. Yeah, I don't recall seeing the actual diagram because as I recall, it was mostly words. That's right. As I recall. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no, I mean, there's no diagrams books. in the book. Pretty sure. I mean, and the book again, it just it goes through a lot of Ben's personal stuff. I mean, <laughs> the good, bad, and the ugly, you know. But it, right. it's really, That's it's right. really deep. I really recommend that you guys get that. Uh, I think more messages here. Can we see the book again? Well, it's called The Richest Real Estate Agent. It just came on bestseller here, Amazon, right? Is that? Uh, I can I can slap it in the. Oh, so uh, slap the link on there if you haven't feel link or whatever link you have. You That'd be good. <clears throat> no, but even even uh, your message are setting the compass. I mean, I, I think it's really really important. I mean, I remember when I was talking with my wife like a long time ago, right? She was like, you know, I wish we could just eat out twice a week, kind of thing, just yeah, without thinking about the money. I'm like, okay, so like you know, recently it's like you know we do that, right? Like you know, this is something that you really wanted to do. Five, 10 years ago that maybe we, we didn't have the ability to do, but now it's like done. So it's like, you gotta, you do have to really get clear on what is it that you're chasing? Like, it's, it's great that you're trying to get more business and more clients, like you're getting more and more, but like, but why, you know, what, like, what is the point? Yeah. You're just getting more and more business and now you're more and more busy. And you know, so I, I think that's like, I can awesome understand point. being new. So here's the thing though, the disclaimer, since you talk rookies and new agents yeah, a lot of times, please. I just want to give a real disclaimer. <clears throat> you have to grind. At first, just let's yeah. get really clear here. Uh, this is the bigger problem. Like, let, I'm gonna I'm gonna show people how to get a thousand. I'm get get do what I did was I didn't have a business card, and I didn't have a website. I all of that is a waste of time. Social media is a waste of time. All of it's a waste of time. Your only thing you need to do as a new agent is talk to a thousand people and ask them if they can if you can buy or sell a house in some way. The only activities that matter to fire the machine up is 90 days of intense grinding and asking for business. It's old school, 1970s. It's the only thing that works. It's, I've done it on in, in the furniture industry. I bought 41 properties in 14 months as an investor with this system. I did like hundreds of sales within the first few years of real estate because at the very beginning of your career, it's not about building a business as much as it is about you got to get enough people in your funnel that know that you want to help them. And there's everyone, everyone. So it's very simple and very, very hard <laughs> yeah, no, at the I, beginning. I, I totally agree. Whenever I talk to a lot of rookies, I was just like, I'm building the website. I'm building this. I'm like, you know, talking about branding my story. I'm like, look, dude, you got to go out and get sales, right? Like it's, that's it. You got to, you got to grind. I mean, you know, I did countless number of open houses, cold calls, door knocks, whatever on my first year. I made like 19K. It was like nothing, but it's like, you got to grind, man. You can't just, you got to fill it up. There. And then the, but then at the beginning, how do I keep them for life would be the hack. Like, yeah. and then how do I do more selling and more holidays? Those are the two scale things you want to sell and take holidays. Cause mentally, so you have to have systems in place. So that's one thing is hiring an assistant with right away, even one hour a week, just to psychologically shift you becoming a business owner right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So when we teach how to hire, it's not uh, full-time ever. I don't believe in full-time. I think two part-timers can run a million dollar into a million dollar business. Yeah, I think so. So I guess we're going to know the question to answer. If anyone has any particular questions to ask sure. Ben, we'll just go ahead with that. And I'm going to stop streaming live now. Uh, so that's, that's done. If anyone has any questions, just put in the chat. We put in the link right now for the book. If you're curious about that. Who do we got here? Adam, Rika, Christine, Gloria, JP, Evelyn. We got some people here. Oh, and we got some people. I'm here to help, here to help if you need. If not, I'm taking my Monday and I'm going hanging out with my family. So, yeah, ditto here, but you know, just awesome. tap his brain for stuff. Yeah, so really, I guess going back to like the first time, you know, as a rookie, it's like, what else do you recommend? So someone just gets their license, you know, yeah. signed up. Okay, ready to go. What do I do now, Ben? Okay, so one thing is this, when you're getting, when you, okay, the, first of all, you have to understand how to think, because if you ask every agent that question, you're going to go talk to a hundred agents and be so freaking distracted. It's unbelievable because everyone is different. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Are you a detailed person? Are you a vision person? Like get, who you are matters, but here's the hack for new agents. 
The only, the first thing I did, and I got five sales my first month, I found a very busy agent and I bribed him. Hmm. I made it so he couldn't say no to me. I said, look, dude, I'll go sell some houses for you. He goes, I've got a team. I said, well, I'll tell you this. I'll take 30% and I'll give you 70. Wow. That, that's like... That's like, you know, hundred percent guarantee kind of thing. It's like, great. How can you, Here's some leads. I'm the, I got all his leads and I mean, by the way, I did a 50, 50 with him. I didn't, yeah. but I would hack it because I got 50 first. He said, no, I'd say 60, 70, 80 as a new agent. Wouldn't $2,000 be awesome. And some experience. Like we think about the business and you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to make all this money. Screw that. Let's get the new guy feel out of the way. Let's bang out some sales as fast as you can. So I would go, go to the busiest agents and lead gen calls to every single busy agent because I know something that, that maybe they don't know is I've coached hundreds and hundreds of really big agents and, they're, and half of them don't know how to be a business owner. They don't know how to build the systems for the buyer's agents. And if a guy shows up and said, can I take your leads that you have no time with and I'll pay you, they are going to lose their mind excited like you're in the game. They're going to love you. So I would lead gen big agents. Second thing is I would list houses for free. I would wow. go to a neighborhood. Yeah. Why not go fast? Why Who not? Cares about, you put three, watch this. Hi, my name's Ben, a brand new agent. Yep. Guess what? I understand that I probably don't have the value as the big agents, but what I do have is I'd rather put my marketing money into listing your house for free so I can promote myself and promote your house. And if I sell it, you'll tell your friends. So what I want to do is I want to, so I want to sign on your lawn that says with my name on it and I better show up, work my ass off and sell your house. And then when you need to buy, hopefully that's with me, but I'm, I'm looking for, a, I'm, I would door knock an area and say, I'll list your house for free, please. Because I'm a new agent. I'm, I know what I'm doing. I just need experience. And if you want a deal, I'll give you a deal. And I would get a sign on the lawn as fast as I possibly could. My first listing in my neighborhood, I, I did it for $500. Ended up on the open house, picked up a client, made 20 the next uh, month. Nice. 20,000. So we think about, well, how do I spend my money in marketing? What are you talking about? Go list some houses for free. Build your base. 100%. I mean, I even tell a lot of rookies, they're like, oh, I don't want to discount this and that. I'm like, look, just get a portfolio, right? Like, do work some sales. Sales. Make some money. Whatever you have to do, just get the, get the stuff underneath your belt so that you have you know, more yeah. experience and confidence to actually get the bigger deals. Yeah, uh, once you have a couple, then you have referrals. I go after referrals. So start with a referral day one. Don't start with the sale. That's the psychology we teach. Mm -hmm. So JP here says, what do you think of scaling with, with virtual assistants? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever sure. works. <laughs> There's a hundred ways to do it, JP. I think overthinking might be the problem more than which one do you do? Uh, if I just think this one advice is very small tasks. Don't give them everything. So your job is deal flow emails. Your job is feedback. And if they're going virtual assistants, maybe the Philippines or something, that's challenging. You've got to be a really good manager to be able to manage virtual assistants. So the answer is this, find the tasks that you need to be done. Don't hire an assistant for everything. Hire one or two things and start getting some wins under your belt as a business owner. So virtual assistants work. I've always liked someone a little closer to me that I could call and because I'm not the best manager. So having a really good assistant helps me because I'm not a good manager. So JP, a couple of things. There are some videos on my YouTube about hiring virtual assistants. I myself have four right now. There you but go. they all do different tasks, whether it's video yeah. editing yeah. or yeah. like- for the um, assistant companies. I'm sorry, what was that? Do you have any um, suggestions for the virtual assistant companies that you are using currently that uh, you would like us to look into? Yeah, sorry for interrupting you there. Uh, yeah, so it depends on what you're looking for, right? So, so they're both the, the full-time VA that handles all your stuff or there's like the part-time. I like, at least for now, the, the project management type of style. So when I have a specific task, I like to find somebody to do that. So if you look at my video,